Welcome back to Let's Play Alan Wake. Again! I'm Burning Dog Face. And last time, we left off just as we were about to finally get some answers to the biggest mystery that has been hovering over our heads this entire time. That being... What the hell happened during the missing week in between Alan diving into Cauldron Lake and Alan waking up in a crashed car on the edge of the forest with a head injury? And as much as I hate to put off those revelations, there's something I wanted to do first. You see, in the previous episode, we also heard a snippet of a song by Old Gods of Asgard. Uh, the chorus was a message left behind for Alan. So, you know, that's the part we listen to, the relevant part. But, uh, when Poets of the Fall did that song, they made a full song. And I happen to think that even though it was created just to support the lore of Alan Wake, I think it's legitimately good. I think it's a beautiful song. So I thought, before we continued, I would share with you the full version of Old Gods of Asgard's The Poet and the Muse. I'll uh, put the lyrics in a pinned comment for uh, easy access. So, without further ado, I offer you a musical interlude. There's an old town road with mystery of Tom the Poet and his muse, and a magic lake which gave a life to the world. Now the muse she was his happiness And he rhymed about her grace And told the stories of treasures Deep beneath the blackened ways Till in the stillness of wonder And still in its misty crown The muse she went down to the lake And in the waves she drowned And now to see your love set free Now to see 
Okay. Two things. Uh, one, yes, that was what uh, Tor was quoting when we met him in the lodge. And two, I don't know about anyone else, but I freely admit that I was uh, air guitaring during that solo. Hot damn. I was just reflecting on how it's interesting that uh, Alan and maybe Zane have had the ability to manipulate reality through their creativity. But rather than changing what already exists, the old gods of Asgard seem to have been instead blessed with the gift of prophecy. I mean, that song we just listened to was simultaneously describing an event no one on Earth could possibly have known about, and leaving a message behind for, like, 40 years in the future? Crazy. Let's see where this drops me. Oh, perfect! Alice! Alice! Where are you? Help! Alice! I'm coming! It's all right! I'm coming! It was a crazy, drunken dream. And yet, it was more than that. It was the truth. A suppressed memory unearthed by the Anderson's moonshine. I was there, an out-of-body observer. This was the night Alice and I had arrived at Bright Falls. The night Alice had disappeared. I had a chance to find out what had happened. It is weird to be playing in first person in a Remedy game, I will say that. What happens if I just try to go over here? Whatever power had brought oh, right. me back to this night at the lake was also stopping me from leaving. I had no choice but to see it through. To find out what had happened. Then let's do this. Beyond this lost memory, there was nothing. I had to follow the footsteps of my past self to find out what had happened that night. To the truth! I remembered being surprised to see the cabin dark. Alice would have never turned the lights off. All right, I'm just gonna, uh... I think that, I think we know enough now that I can lay something out for you guys. The reason that the poor girl whose body ended up getting used as an avatar by the darkness is named Barbara Jagger is because she's a play on Baba Yaga. Which brings me to Bird Leg Cabin. Hmm. Very ominous. I think someone even referred to the Scratching Witch as Baba Yaga at one point. Alice? Alice! Fucking hell. I remembered thinking. I caught a glimpse of her form underwater, sinking into the darkness. <gasps> Diving after her was the last vague memory I had of that night. After that, the next thing I could remember was waking up behind the wheel of the crash car and finding the first pages of the manuscript. <gasps> I couldn't find her in all that blackness. I must have thought she drowned. <sighs> Alice! Jagger had Alice, Alice, and so she had me. Alice! <coughs> I'd been easy prey. Look at the cabin. 
Is there someone in the window? Alice? Maybe she didn't drown after all. Maybe she's inside. Alice! Yes? The dark presence had touched me. She had dug her nails into my brain and used me. Made me her puppet. Oh, I should mention, if you're not familiar with the uh, mythological character, uh, Baba Yaga, the Yaga part is spelled J-A-G-A. -A. She must be here somewhere. Maybe upstairs in this study. Alice! Yes, that's where she is. You can apologize. My ghost Alice! is very tall. You laugh at the whole thing together and put it behind you. She's giving him hope! That's fucked up! You were foolish to think so. No, she's dead. She drowned. No, no, no! It's your fault your wife is dead. You are guilty. All she wanted was to help you right. You killed ah! her. Oh, hush. There's still hope. Cauldron Lake is a special place. Here, you have the power to change things. She wanted you to write. I will tell you what to do. Don't do it! You can write her back. The story will come true, and all will be well again. She had Alice, and the manuscript was the ransom for her. Yes. All right. I'll fix it. I'll bring her back. Fuck. No. I wrote it. I remembered it all now. In the dark, I'd written for days, a week, almost a complete manuscript of a novel entitled Departure. Jagger had been my editor, whispering in my ear, making sure that the unfolding story would make her more and more powerful. I thought I was saving Alice. Even with the cobweb she put in my head, some part of me had been aware enough to write my escape into the story, to bring a light into the cabin to release me before I could finish, to interrupt the horror story before the ending, where darkness consumed everything and everyone. Zane was weak and far away, but I had written him into the story, and his light had been enough to set me free. It is here now. I am here because it was written. I brought the light to set you free. You must hurry. You will know I am here. It will be back soon. It stole the skin of my wife a long time ago. She looks so old. woken up, confused and groggy, my mind consumed by darkness and fear. All I could do was to escape. The week spent in the cabin had taken its toll. I was barely conscious and fading fast. had to have cost Zane terribly, thrown him even deeper into whatever dark place he now haunted. But he had managed to weaken the dark presence, kept me safe that night. That's right, James Joyce. It's your fault, and you're gonna pay for it. Oh.
there's just no music at all. I guess the uh, musical interlude this time was at the other end of the episode. Well, that was ominous as hell, especially the part where Barbara Jagger was clearly aware of me watching her from the future. That's really messed up. Meta-knowledge is, uh, a whole other level. But I suppose that I should, uh... Yeah, I suppose I should, uh, call it here. Odd, because most of the episode is non-interactive. Oh god, that, I remember that jump scare. I was tensing up the whole time. <laughs> uh, but yes. Very, very ominous indeed. I'm Burning Dogface, and I will see you on the next episode of Let's Play Alan Wake again. When we uh, figure out exactly what Agent Nightingale wants with our hero. And try to find a way to continue our journey through the night. Until then, don't take candy from strangers, trust weirdos in diving suits, and stay in the light. <laughs>